Hi, middle of December, we're almost at the end of the year. So I'm just popping on to talk about the five books that I've read so far this month. Um, I started off with a net galley arc that comes out in March, the 2nd of March, and it's The Writing Retreat, sorry, The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. And this one, it has such a fant fantastic idea, really. You've got this horror writer, Rosa Vallo, and she lives on this island type thing. You know, she lives totally deserted. And she invites five would-be writers to her home on a writing retreat to be there for a month. And they'd be totally cut off. And the idea is that they write a novel in a month with her mentoring. So you've got this brilliant idea and you've got the writers, you've got Alex, who is in a real mess because she had a really close friend, Ren, and they had a, they parted their ways painfully. Um, she finds Ren is on this retreat as well, so that causes all, all sorts of anxiety. Then you've got three others, Taylor, Poppy and Kira. And they're on this retreat and things, as it happens in books, You've got almost like a supernatural element because you've got the history of the I, um, the house and Alex feels that she's tapping into this spirit. You've got people disappearing, you've got murder and it promised so much, but I didn't really enjoy the ending. <laughs> I felt I had to suspend belief for the ending, but um, it was enjoyable. It was a really enjoyable and the idea is fantastic. The next one was one I picked up on um, books that I'd sort of kept a note of, always sort of getting around to reading once I finished reading all my prize book lists. And this was The Night Tiger. And oh wow, this was so good. I really, really enjoyed this one. It's set in Malaya in 1930s it mixes myth it mixes folklore you've got this 11 year old boy Ren who um, is a houseboy and when his master dies he's got to find his master's missing finger to be reunited with his body in another part you've got um, a young girl uh, Jilin who is moonlighting at a dance hall because her mother's in debt and she wants to repay her mother's debts. And she finds a finger. So you've got a connection between Ren and Ji Lin over this finger. You've got um, Ren's brother, uh, Yi, who's a ghost and comes to him in dreams. You've got Shin, who's Jilin's stepbrother and those four together their names are four of the five virtues of Confucius. The fifth one is Lee who does appear in the story as well but you're never quite sure who Lee is and ah oh, murder, mystery, secrets, ghosts and tigers. The night tiger because you've got the myth about this the tiger the man who becomes a tiger brilliant 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 i absolutely loved that one then i moved on to another net galley arc that comes out on the 19th of january and that's the illuminated by anandita ghost and this one is you th it, it seems so gentle but it's deceptively gentle you've got shashi and tara mother and daughter and their lives are upended when Robbie, husband, father, dies. Um, Shashi has to navigate her grief, but also her feelings towards Tara, who's estranged. Tara's away at university and she's dealing with um, an affair that she's involved with. Um, she's angry because she didn't take part in her father's funeral rites. So you've got this 
estrangement between the two women. They're battling their grief in their own ways. And the illumination is when they come, where, you know, it is sort of the coming together and what happens then. Um, a very gentle book, but you find that you are swept away with these, these two women and their emotions. Then the next one, um, is this one, I read this one on the train to Edinburgh, um, The Killer Inside Me by Jim Thompson. And this has been on my bookshelf for years. And I picked it up because I've read all of Joe Nesbo's books. And I read somewhere that this was one of his favorite authors. And I also read somewhere, I think, that the character here was uh, an inspiration. I, I don't know. I've, I have a feeling that I've read something like that, but maybe I'm wrong. But you've got a deputy sheriff, Lou Ford, that everybody likes, that he's patient, he's polite, he's well liked. But what a man. He is so twisted. He is so dark. Um, and as it says here, when the list of people who end up dead in Central City increases, Lou Ford faces some very difficult questions. He is, oh, I I haven't come across um, a, 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 a killer like this before. Um Probably the most chilling and believable first person story of the of a criminally warped mind. That's what it says on here. It's a first person narration, and at times it did remind me of Edgar Allan Poe's narrator in The Telltale Heart. The way that he goes off when he's talking about his feelings and what he's doing and why he's doing. This was <laughs> A really dark, violent read. Very, very good. And the final one was an audio book that I listened to. And it's one that I've been picking, thinking of reading for years. It's You've always got in the back of your mind, haven't you, these classics that you think, I ought to read this. I ought to read this. This is a classic. I ought to read this. And I finally listened to it. And it's A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. And it's her essay that's based on a series of lectures that she gave all about women in fiction and in it she talks about what a woman needs to become a writer which is a room of one's own and an independent income the freedom to be able to write and she looks at female writers through history um, and the constraints that were upon them and she talks about Afra Ben, who in the 17th century was the first woman to be independent through writing. And it was almost a trailblazer for the Charlotte Brontes, for the Jane Austens, as time went by. And she discusses whether a woman is better suited to write poetry or novels. And it is is she raises a lot of points there and you, you see the way she's talking, this was written in the 1929, I think it was written. I've probably got that wrong. Um, and you look at how the world she is writing from, writing in, is now different to the world that we're in now. It's fascinating reading, really is. So those are the five books that I read this month. Book of the month, so far, okay, the book of that first half of the month, The Night Tiger. Absolutely brilliant. I love that, the, the mix of magic and folklore. So, heading towards Christmas now, uh, hence the Christmas jumper. So, um, I'll see what I can pick up um, in the next sort of, uh, couple of weeks. Um, I'll definitely be back around Christmas time because I'm hoping for a huge book haul. But, you know, fingers crossed, Father Christmas has been reading all my letters. So, happy reading. Take care.